So in this part of the tutorial, we're going to look at adding more detail. Now to do this, we're going to look at an actual example of importing a file from SketchUp. Now this is a file that's freely available from the SketchUp warehouse. Um, it's called Sunshine Canyon House and it's a really nice model. So we're going to just import that and what we're going to do is keep the hierarchy so that we can actually kind of manipulate individual objects. So let's wait a moment for Twinmotion to import the data. Um, and then you can see it's now processing the data. Now once it gets to that stage, it's normally pretty fast. And here we go, just imports the data. So the first thing I'll do is click onto the manager and I'll click F to fit. Now that kind of just gives me an impression of the overall scene. And I can kind of see that what we've got here is a model of the building itself, a little bit of terrain, and also some kind of backdrop by the looks of things. So I'm just going to lower down the starting ground a tiny bit. Um, we can use that to represent our water in a moment for the lake. Um, let's just kind of like navigate in a little bit here. Um, so we'll just walk forward using the W key. I'm just going to get ourselves a nice little angled view. Um, we'll just kind of move around. And the first thing I'm going to do is just basically change the groundscape, the starting ground as it's called, to water. So scroll down to the water folder and let's drag on some lake texture and wow immediately the whole model starts to look an awful lot better just straight away. Okay so we're just going to turn off the background that actually comes with the model because now we've got the twin motion background that looks a lot nicer and the very first thing we're going to do is just kind of go on to our trees and we're going to add a bit of detail in terms of the uh, background and the trees. Now we can drag individual trees into the scene and they'll just sort of drop onto the landscape. As you can see, that's kind of nice, they just fit down. Um, but the other thing is we can search through this pretty big library of plants and trees, all different sizes, and you will notice they all come in slightly random sizes. When we're doing a large area though, it's a really good idea to get the uh, vegetation painting brush. And what we can do to add quite a bit of detail is drag a number of different trees down into the dock. And when we're ready, we can select those um, we can actually get the brush tool, um, we can adjust the radius if needed, but we can essentially paint or spray, almost painting, um, a variety of these particular trees. Let's just pan up a little bit here. Let's get a bit more going on in the background. This sort of little island with in the middle of the lake, which is quite nice. So it's trying to set a bit of a scene here. Now you'll notice that um, all of the painted vegetation acts as one object almost. What that means is you can actually select individual trees. Then you can change the density of those individual types of tree within the selected area. So it's really cool how you can do that now. Um, and that was definitely uh, not as easy in the previous version. So you can see already we're starting to kind of populate the scene with a bit more detail. Let's keep adding some more detail. Um, we'll start with a bit more naturalistic detail. We'll add some rocks. Um, I really like the Twin Motion rocks. I've said this before, but they look really natural, really nice. And the key is um, sometimes it's kind of worth adding a few and actually kind of just dragging and dropping them and sort of building up a larger area of rock by kind of putting a number of different smaller rocks together. They tend to blend quite well um, because they're kind of quite random in terms of every time you place one you get a different size and rotation. It's quite easy to sort of build up quite a nice big rocky patch just by kind of clicking some multiple rocks in this way. Um, so try and sort of have a little play, see what looks kind of natural. Let's play around with a few different sizes. Some of them are a bit small to be honest. Um, that one's a rather large one there. It's more of a cliff edge. Um, so yeah, I kind of think we'll leave that one. Let's just drag in. That's quite nice. More of a sort of ground line rock. Yeah, kind of piece a few together. That looks pretty cool. Good. Okay, so let's now go and have a look um, at some of the other aspects of the library. Um, we've got basically quite a lot of areas where we can go. Let's have a look at the detail of the bushes. Again, great big library that ships with the product, but you can actually create your own and add more as well. The nice thing with the twin motion ones is they're very high quality. And the really cool thing is they do actually... Um, kind of respond to the weather and things like the wind. So you see them moving and blowing in the wind and um, that's really cool. Um, one thing I do really like is the new sort of plants, the, the way you can drag them down into the dock and then we can use the vegetation scatter tool um, and what you can do with that is you can click 
And basically, it will scatter vegetation over the entire landscape. Wow, <laughs> that was a little bit over the top. So we can click on the minus uh, option to reduce the amount a little bit. One thing you can do is change the settings um, and adjust the size of individual kind of elements. We can also click on um, a bunch of them. Yeah, let's get the rubber. Let's just reduce some of those. Yeah, that's cool. Just reduce a little bit more, just so we get a nice balanced sort of set of planting. And then we can get um, the rubber icon or a razor icon. And we can kind of rub out those particular types of plants. Um, if we want to rub them all out, then we just simply need to select them all and then we can rub out. So here you can see we can rub those out uh, around the shoreline quite straightforwardly, just maybe a little bit around the house, just to create a slightly more natural look. Excellent. So grass and flowers, um, we'll come back to a bit later. We can also drag in um, a few extra things like uh, sort of wood piles, fallen trees, that sort of thing. And these are better placed individually, to be fair. Now, these are based on the new Quixel assets. Um, Epic have sort of acquired, or should we say, joined forces with Quixel. And we talked about that in the early video for Quixel resources and textures. But these mega scans are absolutely high, superb quality. And it does mean that you can import a very large library from the Quixel site for free. It takes a bit of time, but it's well worth doing. Um, you can see we can play around with different groundscapes. I'm just going to see what it looked like with different sand, but actually I think I prefer to keep the groundscape as it is. I will darken it down ever so slightly. Sometimes I do notice the textures come through a little bit lighter than they should um, when you import them, first of all, from SketchUp. So let's kind of just keep working on this model a little bit more, and you can see it's all starting to come together quite nicely, quite rapidly. So we'll just change the view a little bit. Um, and we'll kind of just tweak around. Yeah, it's a nice little view there. Let's kind of actually go inside for a bit. Um, let's add a bit more detail inside the model. So again, when we're talking about adding detail, um, I think there's a couple of things. So let's just save where we've got to so far and just save that to our desktop. So I think what we'll do now is kind of work on the inside a bit more. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, playing around with the material. So I'm just going to get a better glass onto that. And you can see I can change the opacity quite rapidly. Um, I slide that up and down and sort of play around with the reflectiveness. I'm going to get a slightly nicer wooden floor onto the model. Um, and let's kind of play, have a little play with that and spin that around by typing in the angle there, 90 degrees. That's a little bit easier. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at some of the lighting. So again, work on the lighting. You can see I can drag those spotlights in, try and get them sort of fairly equally spaced along the uh, underside of the kitchen, these nice IES lights. And if I open up the manager, I can select all of them. And the great thing is now they're all selected so I can play with them all in one go. Um, and that's a good tip instead of instancing as we talked about in the previous video. Good, so let's go back into our furniture libraries and let's add a little bit more life and detail to the model. So drag in um, some different items of furniture. You can see they drag and snap onto the floor. It's pretty straightforward to place them. Um, went a bit too far out that time. So let's just place that one there and spin that around maybe. Um, so let's kind of just rotate that round, type in 180 degrees, that's easy enough to spin it around. Good, okay, so we're starting to kind of get a little bit more detail added in. Let's add some plants. So the great thing with Twinmotion, even out the box, it's very easy to basically uh, rapidly add detail using the pre-made libraries. Now we have said before, the key thing here, as well as the pre-made libraries, which are super fast to add, um, is to actually create your own user libraries. Now I really recommend this over time, build up bigger user libraries so you have a bit more variety of things that you can add. Um, let's go for some decorations. We kind of add that nice set of pictures there. Um, we'll just drag a few more pictures onto the wall. It starts to come together quite rapidly really. Once you kind of start to populate the, uh, the scene with a bit more detail than it's shipped with, it really does make a big difference. So you can see it's quite a good variety. You can actually swap out the images and the pictures of all these things if needed. Um, let's go down to have a look at the, maybe kind of let's look at the kitchen. We'll go to accessories, we'll drag a bit more detail here. Now the good thing with these is they're all grouped. So if you did want to, you can double click into them and you can access the individual elements like the wine and the glass and so on. Uh, let's just drag in a couple of those and we'll do a quick save. Always a good idea to keep saving as you go. 
Let's drag some bread onto here, um, some very tasty croissants. Possibly might need a plate for those in a moment. I think we'll have a little look. We can rotate them around to a more natural angle. So it's very rapid and that's the beauty with Twinmotion. It's working in real time. It's not like traditional rendering software. So here I've double clicked and I've gone into the group. And you can see I can move the group itself, but by double clicking, I can get into the group. So now we can put our croissants exactly onto a plate um, to tidy that up a little bit there. Good, okay, so by all means explore the libraries. That's one thing that I would really recommend. You do need to explore these libraries in order to find out what's available and what's, uh, you know, where things are, like the coffee cup. You might have expected that to be in kitchen, but it's actually in the office section. Um, so definitely explore those libraries, find out what's in them, but do remember to build your user library as much as you can to populate that with interesting things as well. Okay, so we're just going to keep working on this scene a little bit more. Now like, we're going to talk about decals. Um, decals are a really good way to add um, sort of lots of nice external detail particularly. You can see a decal is something like um, a texture or a stain or some cracking. Something that maybe makes the model look a bit more weathered or, mod or kind of mottled. Um, it's a good way to add a bit of grunge and sort of uh, kind of, not, you know, take away the perfection of a a normal sort of computer generated image. So you can see they really do add quite a lot of detail without too much time. Um, so let's kind of carry on after the decals. Um, let's just do a tiny bit more work on the roof metal here. Again we'll just rotate that round, type in 90 degrees just to get that rotation round. Just a nice looking uh, metal there, I just noticed. Um, that's cool. Good, okay, so let's have a look. Where else can we have a look at improving our model? So you can see it's really nice just sort of scene. Um, it's definitely one that's worth having a play with. Let's just drag some concrete onto the steps there. And again, we'll zoom in here. So let's take a look at how easy it is to adjust the time in twin motion. So really, if up in the top right corner, there's an eye icon. When you click on that, there's a bunch of different options that pop up. But one of them on the first slider is literally the daytime. So we can just slide that up and down and change the time. And we can also click onto the weather slider and down in the dock you can see we can kind of change the weather uh, as we go a bit more cloudy that looks kind of nice with a bit more realistic that sky and uh, let's just frame that image up a tiny bit more um, and we'll keep working on the model the, one of the things i really love with twin motion is you just keep going round and round so working on the model when you when you spot something it's sort of quite intuitive um, you can kind of particularly with a scene like this it's quite natural you can kind of just work on it in lots of different sort of, uh, sort of times almost and you know just add a bit more detail when you need to so yeah we're just going to add a bit more plants a bit more visual interest for this particular view i think that's what i'm trying to say every time you capture a different view you often want to kind of add a little bit more detail so here i'm just dragging some ivy actually onto the ground just to kind of add a bit of greenery to that um that area down below the building a bit mossy a bit green and um, you can see there's some really nice grasses here. Now the best thing to do with the grass, to be honest though, is to use the vegetation paintbrush. Um, and that's a quick, easy way to get a lot of grass into the scene quite rapidly. So we can kind of drag those down onto the dock. Not the detailed ones though, that's why those aren't working. So let's go back up here and let's just drag down the normal grass and flowers. So you drag those down to the dock. What's kind of cool is you can get your brush, you can adjust the size. And basically when we paint and spray, you kind of get this um, almost like a, a green sort of pattern, which is really indicating where you've actually sprayed. So then you can click on the painted vegetation in the, in the manager and you can basically up the density. But you do notice that sometimes you don't actually see the detail of the grass until you get a bit closer. Um, so in the preferences, a little tip here is go to fading of grass and you can change that to uh, something a bit further away. So this is how Twinmotion sort of manages that level of detail. You can see really detailed when you get close up to it. It does look nice. So yeah, that's cool. This is a really nice little view. So I think let's kind of save the model where we are. Just keep saving as you go. Great little tip. And let's just click back on to weather again. Let's have a look at the weather now. So as we slide down towards the winter, um, you'll suddenly notice at a certain point the snow is going to kind of come down onto the ground and then we go a little bit further and the lake will freeze how cool is that so we've got this beautiful icy lake um, with snow on the ground as we change the weather and go through to more cloudy it will start to snow 
when we're in the in the winter season. And instead of raining, it will actually snow. So that's beautiful. You can adjust the snow and the density and so on as well. So I really like that image. That's a really nice atmospheric image. I'm going to click onto the media dock and click create image. Click the plus sign to create my first image there. And we can keep kind of working on that. Let's go for another image. And let's change the time now to something a little bit brighter, a little bit sunnier. And we'll slide that down maybe towards the autumn. Just kind of get a view that looks nice. Just sort of play around with the view there. Yeah, I'm kind of looking for a more of a sort of wetter mood to this sort of particular image. Go for something that's a little bit rainy. You can see it's very overcast and we'll kind of click update. So we've got two very different scenes. So each scene has its own exposure, its own auto light, its own weather in its own time. And that's one of the beauties with Twinmotion, as opposed to other rendering software, where you have to tweak all the settings for every single image. Here, every image uh, remembers its settings and you can adjust these in real time at any time. So quite unique, I think. So here's a nice sunny version. Let's kind of tweak that view and just update it. So when we go into the camera itself, we do have um, some really nice controls. We've got depth of field, parallelism, which is basically um, making the camera into a, uh, a single point perspective camera and vignetting, which adds a nice sort of dark and um, vignette around the image itself. Uh, lens flares, which you notice a bit more perhaps when the, the sun goes down. Let's have a little look at the depth of field. When we click on the more, we can actually choose the focal point. Um, so we can kind of have the background quite blurred out, maybe even the foreground. And we can even type in the various distances here to be a bit more accurate with that too. To play around, I suggest you play around with the different focal lengths um, and camera distances there. We're on quite a wide angled field of view. Sometimes it does look really good to get a smaller field of view, zoom in and then increase the, um, the depth of field. So it's three pretty nice images created in a matter of minutes. And you can see as we click through each one, uh, the weather changes, the time changes and so on. So it really does make it very easy to set up lots of different views of your model. Um, so we're just going to pan around a little bit more here. This is going to get another really nice view. That's a cool one, the lake. Um, and, you know, we'll kind of keep working on the model. I think we just need a little boat here just to finish off the scene. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So a really nice sort of library of boats and vehicles and buses, aircraft, all sorts of stuff you can try. So one of the reasons it's worth doing exercise like this is definitely so you can get to try out the different libraries. And then when you come to do some real projects, you'll know where things are and what's involved. So our scene's really starting to get there now. Um, let's kind of just keep working on this, adding a bit more detail. So I'm just going to go through and add a few more decals. Um, as I've said before, decals are a great way to add a lot of detail to your model quite rapidly. Um, you can actually load in individual image files now. They're great for things like graffiti or um, images, um, things like cracks and stains and stuff. Just sort of make that kind of concrete on that step look a bit less perfect. You can see you can adjust the size and the opacity really easily. Uh, let's just drag some more things down onto this just to make it look a little bit more weathered and a bit more naturalistic. So definitely recommend playing with the decals um, on scenes like this where you're trying to make it look a bit more, bit more natural. Let's just adjust the size and the opacity, very straightforward. Um, some of the mossy, mossy dirt and things like that, they can be quite nice um, to try. It depends what kind of project you're try, trying to uh, represent if it's a brand new probably design maybe not so much but if it's something like this has been out in the wild for a while definitely going to help create a little bit more of a realism and interest to the scene so one way can, we can really boost the reflections is to use the reflection probes these are under the tools menu um, reflection probes can be increased in size and you can immediately see onto the glass the reflectivity it's essentially reflecting the environment um, and that's a really nice way to sort of fake up some deeper reflections in the model. So we can kind of copy a few of these around, particularly in front of reflective or uh, glass materials. Let's just drag that down a bit and you can see that glass really starts to come alive. Let's just move that a bit closer. Yeah, that's cool. You can see a bit of reflectivity now coming in from the, the landscape into the glass. So definitely use reflection probes as a way of increasing some more detail into your models.